everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about horse next the basic way to develop python program is by using a plain text editor and a terminal window you will typing command to an actual python system and they need to follow legal python syntax rather than dumping the syntax rules on you all at once you will store through the them over the next few chapter i used plain text display in this course something showing interactive terminal session and sometimes pieces of python files you should know that there are also many good integrated development environment for python this may feature graphical user interface with advanced text editing and help display you can learn about details for some of these your moment of zen each computing language has its own style in the preface i mentioned that there is often a pythonic way to express yourself embedded in python is a bit of few verbs that express in python philosophy succinctly just type import this into your interactive interpreter and then press the enter key whenever you need to moment of zen i will bring up example of this sentiment through this course things to do this lecture was an introduction of the python language what it does how it looks and whether it fits in the computing world at the end of this lecture i will suggest some mini project to help you remember what you just read and prepare you for what's to come if you do not already have python 3 installed on your computer do it now read appendix d for the details for your computer system start the python 3 interactive interpreter again details are in appendix d it should print a few lines about itself and then a single line a string with that's your promote to type python commands play with the interpreter a little use it like a calculator by typing this 8 integer 9 press the enter key to see the result python should print 72 type the number 47 and press the enter key did it print 47 for you on the next line now type print 47 and press the enter did you also print 47 next line Let's begin with a mini mystery and its solution. What do you think the following two lines? It looks technical, like some kinds of computer program. Actually, it is getting pattern, especially a fragment describe how to turn the heel of a shop. This makes as much sense to me as the New York Times crossed puzzle does to my cat but my wife understand it perfectly if you are a knitter you do too let's try another example you will figure out its purpose right away although you right not know its final product
even if you do not cook you probably recognize that it's a recipe a list of food ingredients followed by directions for preparations but what does it make it's left a nor oegian delicacy that assemble a tortilla slather on a sam butter and jam or whatever you like roll it up and enjoy the catering pattern and the recipe share some features number 1 the fixed vocabulary of word abbreviations and symbol some might be familiar others mystifying rules about what can be said and where they are syntax number 3 a sequence of operation to be performed in order number 4 sometimes a repetition of some operations such as method for frying each piece of leaves number 5 sometimes a reference to another sequence of operations in this recipe you might need to refer to another recipe for reaching potatoes number 6 assume to knowledge about the context the recipe assumes you know hot water is and how to boil it the catering pattern assume that you can knead and pull without stabbing yourself too often number 7 an expected result in our example something for your feel and something for your stomach just do not mix them up you will see all these ideas in computer program i use this non program to demonstrate that programming is not that mysterious it is just a matter of learning the right words and the rules let's leave this stand in and see a real program what does this do if you guess that it is a python program that prints the line then you know that python can be easier to learn than a recipe of knitting patterns and you can practice writing python program from the comfort and safety of your desk far from the harrowing dangers of hot water and pointy stick the python program has some special word and symbol for in print commas clone parenthesis and so on that are important part of the language syntax the good news is that python has a nice syntax and less of it to remember than most computer language it seems more natural almost like a receive now another tiny python program that select a television news glitch from a python list and print it the program print the fourth glitch a python list has as glitches is a sequences of value accessed by their offset from the beginning of the list the first value is a offset 0 and the fourth value is a offset 3 Following is another program that also prints a quote but this time referenced by the person who said it rather than its position in a list. If you were to run this little program it would print the sentence 
কোট ইজ দ্য পাইথন ডিকশনারি এ কালেকশন অফ ইউনিক কিস অ্যান্ড অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড ভ্যালুস ইউজিং এ ডিকশনারি ইউ ক্যান স্টোর অ্যান্ড লুক আপ থিংস বাই নেম হুইচ ইজ অফ এন এ ইউজফুল অল্টারনেটিভ টু এ লিস্ট ইউ ক্যান রিড মাস মোর অ্যাবাউট ডিকশনারিজ ইন ইন নেক্সট ক্লাসেস দ্য ক্লিচ এক্সাম্পল ইউজেস এ স্কোয়ার ব্রাকেট টু মেক এ পাইথন লিস্ট অ্যান্ড দ্য স্টোরেজ এক্সাম্পল ইউজ কার্লি ব্রাকেট হুইচ আর নো রিলেশন টু কার্লি টু মেক এ পাইথন ডিকশনারি দিজ আর এক্সাম্পল অফ পাইথন সিন স্ট্যাক্স অ্যান্ড ইন দ্য নেক্সট ফিউ লেকচার ইউ উইল সি মাচ মোর অ্যান্ড নাও ফর সামথিং কমপ্লিটলি ডিফারেন্ট এক্সাম্পল প্রেজেন্ট এ পাইথন প্রোগ্রাম পারফর্মিং এ মোর কমপ্লেক্স সিরিজ অফ টাস্ক ডোন্ট এক্সপেক্ট টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড হাউ দ্য প্রোগ্রাম ওয়ার্কস ইয়েট দ্যাটস হোয়াট দ্য বুক ইজ ফর দ্য ইন্টেন্ট ইজ টু ইন্ট্রোডিউস ইউ টু দ্য লুক অ্যান্ড ফিল অফ এ টাইপিক্যাল নন ট্রিভাল পাইথন প্রোগ্রাম ইফ ইউ নো দ্য আওয়ার আদার কম্পিউটার ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইউলেট হাউ পাইথন ও কম্পিউটার্স কানেক্ট টু এ ইউটিউব ওয়েবসাইট অ্যান্ড ডিটাইভ ইনফরমেশন অন দ্য মোস্ট হাইলি রেটেড ভিডিও অ্যাট দ্য মোমেন্ট ইফ ইট রিটার্নস এ নর্মাল ওয়েব পেজ ফুল অফ এ স্টিমেল ফরমার টেক্স ইট উড বি হার্ড টু ডিগ আউট দ্য ইনফরমেশন ইউ ওয়ান্ট ইনস্টার ইট রিটার্নস ডাটা ইন জেসন ফরম্যাট হুইচ ইজ মিন্ট ফর প্রসেসিং বাই কম্পিউটার JSON or JavaScript object notation is a human readable text format that describes the types, value and other of the values in it. It is like a little programming language and has become a popular way to exchange data among different computer language and systems. Python program can translate JSON text into Python data structure. The kind you will see in the next lecture as though you wrote a program to create them yourself. That's a lot of data this YouTube response. So the example I will just pin the title of the first video again this is a complete python program that can run yourself this time i run this program i got this output this little python program did a lot in 9 fairly readable lines if you do not know all this item don't worry you will within a next lecture line one import all the codes from the python standard library called json line two import only the url open function from the standard library Line 3, assign a YouTube URL to the variable URL. Line 4, connect to the web server at that URL and requested a particular web service. Line 5, get the response data and assign to the variable content. Line 6, decode content to a text string in JSON format and assign to the variable text. Line 7, convert text to data, python data structure about video. Line 8, get the information about on video at a time into the variable video. Line 8, use a two-level python dictionary and a slice. Line 9, use the print function to print only the title of the video. 
the video information is a combination of various python data structure that you just saw recently in the previous example we used some of python standard library modules but there is nothing scared about them the code that follows shows a rewrite that used an external python software package called request the new version is only 6 lines and i had guessed it's more readable for most people hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about where not to use python python is not the best language for every situation it is not installed everywhere by default appendix d shows you how to install python if you do not already have in on your computer it is fast enough for most application but it might not be the fast enough for some of the more demanding ones if you are program spends most of its time calculating things a program written c c++ or java will generally run faster its python equivalent but not always sometimes a better algorithm in python beats an inefficient one in c the greater speed of development in python gives you more time to experiment with alternatives in many application a program twiddles its thumbs while having a response from some server across a network the cpu is barely involved consequently into in time between static and dynamic program will be closed the standard python interpreter is written in c and can be extended with c code i discuss this a little in optimize your code python interpreters are becomingly faster java was terribly slow in its in fancy and a lot of research and money went into speeding it up python is not owned by a corporation so its enhancement have been more gradual you might have an external demanding application and not matter what you do python does not meet your need then as in iron holm said in the movie alien you have my sympathies the usual alternatives are c c++ and java but a newer iron gog called go could be answer python 2 versus python 3 the biggest issue that you will come forward at that moment is that there are two version of python out there python 2 has been around forever and is pretty installed on linux and apple computer it has been excel language but nothing pre perfect in computer language as in many other areas some mistake are cosmetic and easy to fix whereas other are hard hard fixes are incompatible new program written with them will not work on the old python system and old program written before the fix will not work on the new system python's creator and other decide to bundle to hard fixes together and call it python 3 python 2 is the past and python 3 is the future the last version of python 2 is 2.7 and it will be supported for a long time but it is the end of the line there will be no python 2.8 new
New development will be in version 3. This feature Python 3, if you have been using Python 2, it's almost identical. The most obvious change in how to call print. The most important change is the handling to Unicode character which is covered next lecture. Conversion of popular Python software has been gradual with the usual chicken and egg analogs, but now it looks like we have finally reached a tipping point. Installing Python rather the cluttering this lecture the details on how to install Python 3 are in appendix D. If you don't have Python 3 or are not sure, go there and see what to do for your computer. Running Python. After you have installed a working copy of Python 3, you can use it to run a Python program in this book as well as your own Python code. How do you actually run a Python program? There are too many ways. The in interactive interpreter that comes with Python gives you the capability to exp experiment with a small programs. You type commands line by line and see the results immediately. With the right couple between typing and seeing, you can experiment faster. I will use the interactive interpreter to demonstrate language features and you can type the same commands in your own Python environment. For everything else, store your Python program in test files normally with the .py extension and run them by typing python followed by those file names. Using the interactive interpreter, most of the code examples in the lecture use the interactive interpreter. When you are typing the same commands as you see in the example and get the same result, you will know you are on the right track. You start an interpreter by typing just the name of the main Python program on your computer. It should be Python, Python 3 or something similar for the rest of this. We will assume it is called Python. If you has a difficult name, type a white. Wherever you see Python in a code example, the interactive interpreter works almost exactly the same as Python works on files with one exception. When you type something that has a value, the interactive interpreter prints it value for you automatically. For example, if you start Python and type the number 61 in the interpreter, it will be choice to your mind. In the example that follows, dollar is a simple system promote for your type a command like Python is the terminal window. We will use it for the code example in this lecture, although your promote might be different. This automatically print a value is a time saving feature for the interactive interpreter not a part of the python program but the way print also works within the interpreter whenever you want to print something if you try this example with the interactive interpreter and saw the same result if you just run some real python code in the next you will graduate from online to longer Python program. So why Python? Python is a good general purpose. High level language it is designed to make it very readable which is more important than it sounds. Every computer program is written only once. 
were read and revised many times often many people being readable also makes it easier to learn and remember hence more writable compared with other popular language python has a gentle learning curve that makes you productive soon sooner yet it has depth that you can explore as you gain expertise python relative transness makes it possibility for you to write a program that much smaller than its equivalent in a static language studies have shown that programmers tend to produce roughly the same number of lines of code per day regardless of the language so written half the lines of code double your productivity just like that python is the not so secret weapon of many companies that think this is important python is the most popular language for introductory computer science course at the top american college it is also the most popular language for everything evaluating program skill by over 2000 employee and of course it is free as in vara and speech write anything you want with python and use it anywhere freely no one can read your python program and say that's a nice little program you have there it would be too bad if something happen to it python runs almost everywhere and has batteries include a metric boatload of useful software in its standard library but maybe the best reason to use python is an unexpected one people generally like it they actually enjoy program with it rather than training it as a just another tool to get stuff done often they will say that they miss one feature or python when they need to work in another language and that's what is separate python from most of its peers hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about why not to use python python is not the best language for every situation it is not installed everywhere by default appendix d shows you how to install python if you do not already have in on your computer it is fast enough for most application but it might not be the fast enough for some of the more demanding ones if you are program spends most of its time calculating things a program written c c++ or java will generally run faster its python equivalent but not always sometimes a better algorithm in python beats an inefficient one in c the greater speed of development in python gives you more time to experiment with alternatives in many application a program twiddles its thumbs while acting a response from some server across a network the cpu is barely involved consequently in to in time between static and dynamic program will be closed the standard python interpreter is written in c and can be extended with c code i discuss this a little in optimize your code python interpreters are becomingly faster java was terribly slow in its in 
fancy and a lot of riches and money went into speeding it up python is not owned by corporation so it enhancement have been more gradual you might have an external demanding application and not matter what you do python does not meet your need then as in iron holm said in the movie alien you have my sympathies the usual alternatives are c c++ and java but a newer iron gog called go could be answer python 2 versus python 3 the biggest issue that you will comfort at that moment is that there are two version of python out there python 2 has been around forever and is pretty installed on linux and apple computer it has been excel language but nothing pre perfect in computer language as in many other areas some mistake are cosmetic and easy to fix whereas other are hard hard fixes are incompatible new program written with them will not work on the old python system and old program written before the fix will not work on the new system python's creator and other decide to bundle to hard fixes to gather and call it python 3 python 2 is the past and python 3 is the future the last version of python 2 is 2.7 and it will be supported for a long time but it is the end of the line there will be no python 2.8 new development will be in python 3 this future python 3 if you have been using python 2 it's almost identical the most obvious change in how to call print the most important change is the handling to unicode character which is covered next lecture conversion of popular python software has been gradual with the usual chicken and egg analogs but now it look like we have finally reached a tipping point about a test of pi let's begin with a mini mystery and its solution how do you think the following two lines it looks technical like some kinds of computer program actually it is getting pattern especially a fragment describe how to turn the heel of a shock this makes as much sense to me as the new york times crossed puzzle does to my cat but my wife understand it perfectly if you are a kinetic you do to let's try another example you will figure out its purpose right away although you right not know its final product even if you do not cook you probably recognize that it's a receive a list of food ingredients followed by directions for preparations but what does it make it's left a nor oegian delicacy that assemble a tortilla slather on a sam butter and jam or whatever you like roll it up and enjoy
the ketening pattern and the receive share some features number 1 a fixed vocabulary of word abbreviations and symbol some might be familiar others mystifying rules about what can be said and where they are syntax number 3 a sequence of operation to be performed in order number 4 sometimes a repetition of some operations such as method for frying each play piece of leaves number 5 sometimes a reference to another sequence of operations in this receipt you might need to refer to another receipt for reaching potatoes number 6 assume to knowledge about the context the receipt assumes you know hot water is and how to boil it the ketening pattern assume that you can knit and pull without stabbing yourself too often number 7 an expected result in our example something for your feel and something for your stomach just do not mixed them up you will see all these ideas in computer program i use this non program to demonstrate that programming is not that mysterious it is just a matter of learning the right words and the rules let's leave this stand in and see a real program what does this do if you guess that it is a python program that prints the line then you know that python can be easier to learn than a receipt of ketening patterns and you can practice writing python program from the comfort and safety of your desk far from the harrowing dangers of hot water and pointy stick the python program has some special word and symbol for in print commas clone parenthesis and so on that are important part of the language syntax the good news is that python has a nice syntax and less of it to remember than most computer language it seems more natural almost like a receipt now another tiny python program that select a television news glitch from a python list and print it the program pin the fourth glitch a python list has as glitches is a sequences of value accessed by their offset from the beginning of the list the first value is a offset 0 and the fourth value is a offset 3 Following is another program that also pins a quote but this time referenced by the person who said it other than its position in a list. If you were to run this little program it would pin the sentence Quote is a Python dictionary, a collection of unique keys and associated values. Using a dictionary, you can store and look up things by name, which is often a useful alternative to a list. You can read much more about dictionaries in few in next classes. The glitch example uses. a square bracket to make a python list and the storage example use curly bracket which are no relation to curly 
to make a python dictionary these are example of python syntax and in the next few lecture you will see much more and now for something completely different example present a python program performing a more complex series of tasks don't expect to understand how the program works yet that's what the book is for the intent is to introduce you to the look and feel of a typical non trivial python program if you know the or other computer language you will learn how python computers connect to a youtube website and retrieve information on the most highly rated video at the moment if it returns a normal web page full of html format text it would be hard to dig out the information you want instead it returns data in json format which is meant for processing by computer json or javascript object notation is a human readable text format that describe the types value and other of the values in it it is like a little programming language and has become a popular way to exchange data among different computer language and system python program can translate json text into python data structure the kind you will see in the next lecture as though you wrote a program to create them yourself that's a lot of data this youtube response so the example i will just print the title of the first video again this is a complete python program that can run yourself this time i run this program i got this output this little python program did a lot in nine fairly readable lines if you do not know all this item don't worry you will within a next lecture line 1 import all the codes from the python standard library called json line 2 import only the url lopen function from the standard library line 3 assign a youtube url to the variable url line 4 connect to the web server at the url and requested a particular web service line 5 get the response data and assign to the variable content line 6 decode content to a text string in json format and assign to the variable text line 7 convert text to data python data structure about video line 8 get the information about one video at a time into the variable video Line eight use a two-level Python dictionary and a slice. Line nine use the print function to print only the title of the video. The video information is a combination of various Python data structure that you just saw recently. In the previous example, we used some of Python standard library modules. but there is nothing scared about them the code that follows shows a rewrite that used an external python software package called request hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about float integers are whole numbers but floating point numbers have decimal points 
followers are handled similarly to integer you can use the operators and deep mode function to convert other types of floats you use the float function as you for boolean acts like tiny integer converting an integer to a float just make it the proud processor of a decimal point and you can convert a string containing character that would be a valid float digit sign decimal point or on a followed by an exponent to a real float math functions python has the usual math functions such as square root cosines and so on we will save them for appendix c in which we also discuss python uses in science string non programmers often think that programmers must be good at math because they work with numbers actually most programmers work with string of text much more than numbers logical thinking often more important than math skill because of its support for the unicode standard python 3 can contain characters from any written language in the world plus a lot of symbols its handling of that standard was a big reason for its split from python 2 it's also a good reason to use version 3 i will get into unicode in various places because it can be daunting at times in the string examples that follow i will mostly use ascii examples string are our first example of a python sequence in this case they are a sequence of characters unlike other languages string in python are immutable you cannot change a string in place but you can copy part of strings to another string to get the same effects you will see how to do this shortly create with quotes you make a python string by enclosing characters in either single quotes or double quotes as demonstrated in the picture the inactive interpreter each was string with a single quote but all are treated exactly the same by python i have two kind of quotes characters the main purpose is so that you can create string containing quotes characters you can have single quotes inside double quotes string or double quotes inside single quotes string you can also use three single quotes or three double quotes triple quotes are not very useful for short string like this their most common use is to create multi line string like this class poem from edward lear this was entered in the interactive interpreter which promoted us with triple quotes then for the first line and triple dot until we entered the final triple quotes and went to the next line if you try to create that poem with single quotes python would make a fuse when you went to the second line but the way there's a difference between the output of print and the automatic hitching done by the interactive interpreter print strips quotes from string and prints their contents it is meant for human output it helpfully adds a space between each of the 
things it prints and a new line at the end if you do not want the space or new line you will see how to avoid them shortly the interpreter prints the string with single quotes and escape character such as backslash n finally there is the empty string which has no characters at all but it perfectly valid you can create an empty string with any of these afore mentioned quotes why would you need an empty string sometimes you might want to build a string from other strings and you need to start with a blank state convert data types by using str you can convert other data types python data types to string by using the str function python use the str function internally when you call print with object that are not string and when doing string enter polytian escape with black slash python lets you escape the meaning of some characters within string to achieve effects that would otherwise be hard to express by preceding a character with a black slash you give it a special meaning the most common escape sequence is black slash n which means to begin a new line with this you can create multi line string from a one line string you will see the escape sequence black slash t used to align text the final string has a terminating tab which of course you cannot see you might also need underscore or underscore to specify a literal single or double quote inside a string that is quoted by the same character and if you need a literal black slash just type two of them That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about combine with plus. You can combine literal string or string variables in Python by using the plus operator as demonstrated here. You can also combine literal string just by having one after the other python does not add a space for you when consent tenating string so in the proceeding example we need to include a space explicitly it does add a space between each argument to a print statement and a new line at the end duplicate with integer you can see the integer operator to duplicate string try typing this line into your interactive interpreter and see what they print extract a character with a square bracket to get a single character from a string specify its offset inside a square bracket after the string's name the first offset is 0 the next is 1 and so on the last offset can be specified with minus 1 
so you do not have to count going to the left are minus 2 minus 3 and so on if you specify an offset that is the length of the string or longer you will get an exception indexing work the same with the other sequence which we cover in previous lecture because string are immutable you cannot insert a character directly into one or change the character at a specific index let's try to change any to penny and see what happens instead you need to use some combination of string function such as replace or a slice which you will see in a moment slice with start in step you can extract a substring from a string by using a slice you define a slice by using a square bracket a start offset and end offset and an optional size step size some of these can be omitted the slice will included characters from offset start to one before end next track the entire sequence from start to end it specifies from the start offset to the end it specify from the beginning to the end offset minus 1 indicate from the start offset to the end offset minus 1 start end step exact from the start offset to the end offset minus 1 skipping characters by step as before offset go 0 1 and so on from the start to the right and minus 1 minus 2 and so forth from the end to the left if you do not specify start the slice uses 0 if you do not specify end it uses the end of the string Let's make a string of the lower case English letter using a plain string is the same as zero string. Here's an example from offset twenty to the end. Now from offset ten to the end. and another offset 12 to 14 the three last character in the next example we go from offset 18 to the fourth before the end notice the difference from the previous example in which starting at minus 3 gets the x but ending at minus 3 actually stops at minus 4 the w in the following we extract from 6 before the in to 3 before the end if you want to step size other than 1 specify it after a second colon as shown in the next example from the start to the end in a step of seven characters from offset 4 to 19 by 3 from offset 19 to the end by 4 from the start to offset 20 by 5 again the end needs to be one more than the actual offset and that's not all given a native step size this handy python slicer can also step backward this is start the end and ends at the start skipping nothing it turns out that you can get the same result by using this slicer more
for giving a bad offset than our single index lookup. A slice offset earlier than the beginning of a string is treated as 0 and one after the end is treated as minus 1. As is demonstrated in this next example, from 50 before the end to the end, from 51 before the end to 50 before the end, from the start to 69 after the start, from 70 after the start to 70 after the start. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about escape with slash. Python lets you escape the meaning of some character within a string to achieve effects that would otherwise be hard to express. By preceding a character with a black slash, you give to it a special meaning. The most common escape sequence is black slash n, which means to begin a new line. With this, you can create multiple strings from a one line string. You can see the escape sequence black slash t used to align text. You might also need black slash or black slash double quotes to specify a literal single or double inside a string that quoted by the same character and if you need a literal black slash just type two of them Combine with plus. You can combine literal string or string variable in Python by using the plus operator as demonstrated here. You can also combine literal string just by having on after the others. Python does not add a space for you when concatenating strings. So in the preceding example, we need to include a space explicitity. It does add a space between each argument to print a statement and a new line at the end. Duplicate with asterisk. You use the asterisk operator to duplicate a string. Try typing this line into your interactive interpreter and see what they print. Extract a character with a square bracket to get a single character from a string. Specify its offset inside a square bracket after the string name. The first offset is zero, the next is one, and so on. The last offset can be specified with minus one, so you do not have to count going to the left, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. If you specify an offset, that is the length of the string or longer, you will get an exception. Indexing work the same with the other sequence type. Because string are immediately, you cannot insert a character directly into one or change the character at a specific index. Let's try to change Henny to Penny and see what happens. Instead, you need to use some combination string functions such as replace or a slice. String. Non programmers often think that program must be good at math because they work with numbers. Actually, most programmers work with a string of text much more than numbers. Logical thinking often more important than math skills because of its supports for the 
Unicode standard, Python 3 can contain character from any writing language in the world, plus a lot of symbol. Its handling of that standard was a big reason for its split from Python 2. It is also a good reason to use version 3. I will get into Unicode in version place because it can be daunting at time. In the string example that follow, I will mostly use SC example. String are out first example of Python sequence. In this case, they are a sequence of character. Unlike the program string in Python are immutable, you cannot change a string in place. But you can copy part of a string to another string to get the same effects. You will see how to do this shortly. Create with quotes. To make a python string by enclosing character in either string quotes or double quotes as demonstrated in the code. The inter inter interactive interpreter each of the string with a single quotes but all are treated exactly the same by python. Why have two kind of quotes character? The main purpose is so that you can create a string containing quote character. You can have single quotes inside double quotes string or double quotes inside single quotes string. You can also three single quotes or three double quotes. Triple quotes are not very useful for short string like this. They are most common used in to create multiple string like this classic poem from Edward Lear. This was interpreted in the interactive interpreter which promotes us with triple quotes then for the first line and triple dot until we enter the final triple quotes and went to the next line. If you try to create that poem with single quotes, Python would make a fuss when you went to the second line. If you have multiple lines within triple quotes, the line ending character will be preserved in the string. If you have reading or trailing space, they will also be kept. But the way there's different between the output of print, the automatic inchoing done by the interactive interpreter. Print is skipped, quotes from string and prints their content. It's meant for human output. It helpful at a space between each of these things it prints and a new line at the end. If you do not want the space or new line, you will see how to avoid them shortly. Finally, there's the empty string which has no character at all, but it prefers perfectly valid. You can create an empty string with any of the Effort mentions quotes. Why would you need an empty string? Sometimes you might want to build a string from other strings. And you need to start with a blank state. Hello everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about floats. Integers are whole numbers, but floating point numbers have decimal point. Floats are handled sim similarly to integers. You can use the operator and deep mode function. To convert other types of floats, you use the float function as before booleans act like teeny teenager. 
converting an integer to a float just make it the proud possessor of a decimal point and you can convert a string containing character that would be a valid float to a real float math functions python has the usual math functions such as square root cosine and so on we will save them for appendix c in which we also discuss python used in scenes string non programmers often think that program must be good at math because they work with numbers actually most programmers work with string of text much more than numbers logical thinking often more important than math skills because of its supports for the unicode standard python 3 can contain character from any written language in the world plus a lot of symbol its handling of that standard was a big reason for its split from python 2 It is also a good reason to use version 3. I will get into Unicode in version place because it can be daunting at time. In the string example that follow, I will mostly use SC example. String are out fast example of Python sequence. In this case, they are a sequence of character. Unlike the program string in Python are immutable you cannot change a string in place but you can copy part of a string to another string to get the same effects you will see how to do this shortly create with quotes to make a python string by enclosing character in either string quotes or double quotes as demonstrated in the code the int inter interactive interpreter each of the string with a single quotes but all are treated exactly the same by python why have two kind of quotes character the main purpose is so that you can create a string containing quote character you can have single quotes inside double quotes string or double quotes inside single quotes string You can also three single quotes or three double quotes. Triple quotes are not very useful for short string like this. They are most common used in to create multiple string like this classic poem from Edward Lear. This was inserted in the interactive interpreter which promotes us with triple quotes then for the first line and triple dot until we enter the final triple quotes and went to the next line If you try to create that poem with single quotes python would make a fuss when you went to the second line If you have multiple lines within triple quotes the line ending character will be preserved in the string if you have reading or trailing space they will also be kept but the way there is defined between the output of print the automatic enclosing done by the interactive interpreter print is kept quotes from string and prints their content it's meant for human output it helpful add a space between each of these things it prints and a new line at the end if you do not want the space or new line you will see how to avoid them shortly Finally there's the empty string which has no character at all 
but it prefers perfectly valid. You can create an empty string with any of the aforementioned quotes. Why would you need an empty string? Sometimes you might want to build a string from other strings. And you need to start with a blank state. Slice with a start int and a step. You can extract a substring from a string by using a slice. You define a slice by using a square bracket, a start offset and an offset. And an optional step size. Some of this can be omitted. The slice will Included character from offset start to one before end. Exert the entire square from the start to end. Start offset. SC from the start offset to the end. Start offset end. Indicate from the start offset to the end offset minus 1. Start offset end offset step. Exit from the start offset and the end offset minus 1. Skipping character by step. As before offset go 0 1 and so on from the start to the right and minus 1 minus 2 and so forth from the end to the left. If you do not specify start the slice use a 0. If you do not specify int, it uses the int of the string. Let's make a string of this lowercase English letter. Using a plus plain offset is the same as zero offset. Here an example from offset 20 to the end. Now from offset 10 to the end. And another offset 12 to 14. The three last character. In this next example, we grow from offset 18 to the fourth before the end. Notice the difference from the previous example in which starting at minus 3 gets the x, but ending at minus 3 actually stops at minus 4 the w. In this, we extract from 6 before and into 3 before the end. If you want to step size other than 1, specify it after second clone as shown in the text series of example. For the start to the end in a step of 7 character. From offset 4 to 19 by 3. From offset 19 to the end by 4. From the start to offset 20 by 5. And that's not all. Given a negative step size, this handy Python slice can also help backward. This start at the end and ends the start, skipping nothing. It turns out that you can get the same results by using the slice r. Slice are more forgiving of bad offsets than a single index lookup. A slice offset earlier than the beginning of a string is treated as 0 and one after the end is treated as minus 1, as is demonstrated in the next series of example from 50 before the end to the end from 51 before the end to 50 before the end from the start to 69 after the start from 70 after the start to 70 after the start that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the python course 
In this lecture, I am telling you about recorder item with short. You will often need to short the item in a list by their values rather than their offset. Python provides two functions. The list function short at list self in place. In general, function stored returns to a stored copy to the list. If the item in the list are numbers, they are sorted by default in accessing numeric order. If they are string, they are stored in alphabetical order. S stored underscore marks is a copy and creating it did not change the original list. But calling the list function short on the marks list does change marks. If the elements of your list are all of the same type will work correctly. You can sometimes even mix type, for example, integer and float, because they are automatically convert to one another by Python in expression. The default short order is extending, but you can add the argument reverse equal to true to set it to descending. Now get length by using len. Len returns the number of item in a list. Assign with equal comma copy with copy. When you assign on list to more than one variable, changing the list in one place also changes in the order as illustrated here. So there is in B now, it is still underscore bracket 1, 2, 3 or underscore bracket surprise 2, 3. Let's see. Remember is the sticky note analogy. B just refers to the same list object as A. Therefore, either we change the list content by using the name A or B. It is reflected both. You can copy the value of a list to an independent fresh list by using any of this method. Add the list copy function, do the list conversion function, thin the list slice. Our original list will be A again. We will make V with the list copy function, C with the list conversion function and D with a list slice. Again, B and C and D are copies of A. They are now object with their own values and no connection to the original list object square bracket 1, 2, 3 to which refers. Changing A does not affect the copies B, C and D. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about add add item by offset with insert. The append function adds item only to the ends of the list. When you want to add an item before any offset in the list, use insert. Offset 0 insert at the beginning and offset beyond the end of the list insert at the end. Like append so you do not need to worry about python throwing the exception delete any item by offset with del our fact checkers have just informed us that gummo was indeed one of the marx brothers but carl was not let's undo that last insertion when you delete an item by its position in the list, the item that follow it move back to take the deleted item's space and the list length decrease by 1. If we delete Harpo from the last version of the marks list, we get this as a result. Delete an item by value with remove. If you are not sure or do not care where the item is in the list, use remove to delete by value. Goodbye.
gamma. Get an item by offset and delete it by using pop. You can get an item from a list and delete it from the list at the same time by using pop. If you can pop with an offset, it will return the item and at the offset. With no argument, it uses minus 1. So pop returns the head of the list and pop or pop minus 1 returns the tail at shown here. Finds an items offset by value with index. If you want to know the offset of an item in a list by list value, use index. List of lists. List can contain elements of different types, include other lists as illustrated. So how does all underscore bars a list of lists look like? Let's look at the first item in it. The first item is a list. In fact, it is a small underscore bar. The first item we specific when creating all underscore bar, you should be able to guess what the second time is. It is the second time we specified extend underscore bar. If we want the first item of extend underscore bar, we can extract it from all underscore bar by specifying two index. Change an item by offset. Just as you can get the value of a list item by its offset, you can change it. Again, the list offset needs a B, a valid one for list. You cannot change a character in a string in this way because strings are immutable. Lists are mutable. You can change how many items a list contain and the item themselves. Get a slide extract item by offset range. You can extract a subsequent a list by using a slice. A slice of a list is also a list. As with a string, slice can step by values other than one. The next example start in the beginning the goes right by two. Here we start at the end and go left by two. And finally the trick to reserve a list. Add an item to the end with append. The traditional way to adding item to a list is to append them one by one to the end. In the previous example, we forgot zip4, but that's alright because the list is mutable. So we can add him now. Combine list by using extent or plus equal. You can merge one list into another by using extend. Suppose that a well-meaning purpose gave us a new list of marks called other and write we had like to merge them into the main merge check list. Alternatively, you can use plus equal. If we had used append, others would have been added as a single list item rather than merge it item. This again demonstrated is that a list can contain element of different types. In this case, for string and a list of two string. Hello everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about getting all keys by using keys. You can use keys to get all in keys in a dictionary. We will use the different sample dictionary for the next few examples. In Python 2, keys just return a list. Python 3 returns dict keys, which is an iterable view of the keys. This is handy with large dictionaries because it does not use the item and memory to create and store a list that you might not use. But often you actually do want a list. In Python 3, you need to call list to convert a dict underscore keys object to a list. 
in python 3 you also need to use the list function to turn the results of values and items into normal python list i am using that in this example get all values by using values to obtain all the values in a dictionary use values get all key value pair by using items when you want to get all the key values pairs from a dictionary use the item function each key and value is written as a tuple such as green comma go assign with equal comma copy with copy as with list if you make a change to a dictionary it will be reflected in all the names that refer to it to actually copy keys and values from a dictionary to another dictionary and void this you can use copy now sets a set is like a dictionary with its value thrown away leaving only the keys as with a dictionary each keys must be unique you used to set when you only want to know that something exist and another else about it use a dictionary if you want to attach some information to the key as a value at some bygone time in some places set theory was taught in elementary school along with basic mathematics if your school skipped it this picture shows the idea of union and intersection suppose that you take the union of two sets that have some keys in common because a set must contain only one of each item the union of two sets will contain only one of each keys the null or empty set is a set with zero element in this picture an example of a null set would be female name beginning with x create with set to create a set you can use the set function or enclose on or more comma separated value in curly bracket as shown here as with dictionary keys set and unordered convert from other data types with set function you can create a set from a list a string tuple or dictionary discarding any duplicate values first let us take a look at a string with more than one occurrence of some letters notice that the set contain only on e or t even though letter contain two of each now let's make a set from a list this time a set from a tuple when you give set function a dictionary it use only the keys that's it for the lecture thank you for watching welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about convert by using dict you can use the dict function to convert two value sequence into a dictionary my turn into such key value sequence at time such as strontium 19 carbon 14 or vikings 20 packer 7 the first item to is e sequence is used as the key and the second as the value first here a simple a small example using lol we could have used any sequence containing two item sequence here are other example a list of two item tuples 
a tuple of two item list, a list of two character string, a tuple of two character string. That makes it easy to create these two item sequence. Add or change an item by key. Adding an item to a dictionary is easy. Just refer to the item by its key and assign a value. If the key was already present in the dictionary, the exciting value is replaced by the new one. If the key is new, it is added to the dictionary with its value. Unlike list, you do not need to worry about Python throwing an exception during assignment by specifying an index that's our offering. Let's make a dictionary of the most member of Monty Python using their last name as key and first name as values. We are missing one member, the one born in America, Terry Gilliam. Here's an attempt by an animus programmer to add him, but he is both the first name. Add here is some repair code by another program who is Pythonic in more than one way. By using the same key, Gillian, we replace the original value Gary with Terry. Remember that dictionary key must be unique. That's why we use the last name for key instead of first name. Here, two members of Monty Python have the first name Terry. We first assigned the value Gillian to the key Terry and then replaced it with the value John. Now combine dictionaries with updates. You can use the updates function to copy the key and values of one dictionary into another. Let's define the Python dictionary with all members. We also have a dictionary of other humorous person called others. Now along comes another animus program with think the members of others should be member of Monty Python. What happens if the second dictionary has the same key as the dictionary into which is being merged? The value from the second dictionary wins. Delete an item by key with del. Our animus program code was correct technically but he should not have done it. The members of others, although funny and famous, were not in Money Python. Let's undo those last two addition. You can often use tuple in place of list, but they have many few functions. There is no append, insert and so on, because they cannot be modified after creation. Why not just use list instead of tuple everywhere? Tuple used less space. You cannot cover tuple item by mistake. You cannot use tuple as directory keys. Function argument as fast as tuples. I would not go into much more detail about tuple here. In every program, you will use list and dictionaries more, which is a perfect sego to. Dictionaries. A dictionary is similar to a list, but the order of times does not matter, and they are not selected by an offset such as 0 or 1. Instead, you specify a unique key associated with each value. This key is often a string, but it can actually be any of Python's immutable types, Boolean, integer, float, tuple, string, and other that you will see in the next lecture. Dictionaries are mutable. So you can add, delete, and change their key value elements. If you have worked with language that support only arrays or list, you will love dictionaries. Create with curl bracket. To create a dictionary, you will place curl bracket around comma separated key value path. The simplest dictionary is an empty one 
content on key or value at all. Let's make a simple a small dictionary with quotes for Ambrose Press, the Devil's Dictionary. Typing the dictionary's name in the interactive interpreter will print its key and value. Convert by That's all for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about import only what you want from a module. With Python, you can import one or more parts of a module. Each part can keep its original name or you can give it an alias. First, let's import get underscore description from the report module with its original name. Now import it as to underscore it. Module search path. When does Python look for file to import? It uses a list of directory name and zip archive first stored in the standard sys modules as the variable path. You can access and modify this list. Here the value of size.path and python 3.3 on my Mac. that initial blank output line in this empty string which is standard from the current disk directory if is the first size dot part python looks in the current directory first when you try to import something import report looks for report dot pi the first match will be used this means that if you Define a module named random and it is in the search path before the standard library. You will not be able to access the standard libraries random now. Package We went from single lines of code to multi line function to standard programs to multiple modules in the same directory. To allow Python applications to scale even more, you can organize module into file hierarchies called package. Maybe we want different type of text forecast, one for the next day and one for the next week. One way of structure that is to make a directory names source and create two modules within it daily.py and weekly.py each has a function called forecast the daily version runs a string and the weekly version returns a list of seven strings here is the main program and the two modules a list and feeds each items of the list to the for loop Adding a number to each item as a little bottom. Main program boxes slash whether dot pi. You will one more thing in this source directly a field name underscore init underscore dot pi. This can be empty, but Python needs it to treat the directory containing it as a package. Run the main whether dot pi program to see what happens the python standard library one of python prominent claims is that it has batteries included a large standard library of modules that performs many useful tasks and are kept separate to avoid bloating the core language. When you are about to write some Python code, 
it is often worthwhile to first check whether there is a standard module that already does what you want it is surprising how often you encounter little game in the standard library patron also provide authoritative documentation for the module along with the tutorial drag hell men's website python module of the week and this book the python standard library by example are also very useful guide upcoming chap lecture in this course feature many of the standard modules that are specific for the web system database and so on modules and the import statement we are going to set up another level creating and using python code in more than one file a module is just a file of python code the text of this lecture is organized in a hierarchy word sentence paragraphs and chapter otherwise it would be unreadable after a page or two code has a roughly similar bottom up organization data types are like words statement are like sentence functional like paragraphs and module are like chapter to continue the analogy of this book when i say that something will be explained in lecture in programming there's like referred to code in another module we refer to code of other module by using the import statement this makes the code and variables in the imported module available to your program import a module the simplest use of the import statement is import module where module is the name of another python file without the py extension let's simulate a weather station and print a weather report on main program prints the report and a separate module with a single function returns the weather description used by the report here the main program if you have these two file in the same directory and instruct python to run weather main dot py as the main program it will access the report module and run it get underscore description function we wrote this version of get underscore description to return a random result of a list of string so that is what the main program will get back and print we used imports in two different places the main program whether main dot py imported the module report in the module report dot py the get underscore description function imported the choice function from python standard random module we also used imports in two different way the main program call import report and then ran report dot get underscore description the get underscore description function in report dot py called from random import choice and then ran choice possibilities in the first case we imported the entire report module but needed to be used report as a prefix to get underscore description after the import statement everything in report dot py is available to the main program as long as we track report before its name by qualifying the contents of a module with the module name we avoid any nasty naming conflicts there could be a get underscore description function in some other 
module and we would not call it by mistake in the second case we are within a function and know that nothing else name choice is here so we imported the choice function from the random module directly we could have written the function like the following synapse which returns random results like many aspects of programming dot pick the style that seems the most clear to you the module qualified name is safer by requires a little more typing the get underscore description example short variations of how to import but not where to do importing they all called import from inside the function we could have imported random from outside the function you should consider a import from outside the function of the imported code might be used in more than one place and from inside if you know it used will be limited some people prefer to pull all their imports at the top of the file just to make all the differences to their code explicit either way works import a module with another name in our main whether name dot py program we called import report but what if you have another module with the same name or want to use a name that is more memor monomic or shorter in which a suitable you can import using an alias let's use the alias wr that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about stand alone programs thus far you have been writing and running code fragments such as the following within python's interactive interpreter now let's make your first stand install program on your computer create a file called test.py containing this single line in python code notice that there's no promote just a single line of python code ensure that there is no indentation in the line before print if you are running python in a text terminal or terminal window type the name of your python program follow by the program file name command line arguments on your computer create a file called test2.py that contains these two lines now use your version of python to run this program here is how it might look in a linux or mac os x terminal window using a standard shell program modules and the import statement we are going to set up another level creating and using python code in more than one file a module is just a file of python code the text of this lecture is organized in a hierarchy word sentence paragraphs and chapter otherwise it would be unreadable after a page or two code has a roughly similar bottom up organization data types are like words statement are like sentence function are like paragraphs and module are like chapter to continue the analogy of this book when i say that something will be explained in lecture in programming there's like referred to code in another module 
we refer to code of other module by using the info statement this makes the code and variables in the imported module available to your program import a module the simplest use of the import statement is import module while module is the name of another python file without the py extension let's simulate a weather station and print a weather report one main program prints the report and a separate module with a single function returns the weather description used by the report here the main program if you have these two file in the same directory and instruct python to run weather main.py as the main program it will access the report module and run it get underscore description function we wrote this version of get underscore description to return a random result of a list of a string so that is what the main program will get back and print we used imports in two different places the main program whether main.py imported the module report in the module report.py the get underscore description function imported the choice function from python standard random module we also used imports in two different way the main program call import report and then ran report dot get underscore description the get underscore description function in report.py called from random import choice and then ran choice possibilities. In the first case, we imported the entire report module but needed to be used report as a prefix to get underscore description after the import statement everything in report.py is available to the main program as long as we track report before its name by qualifying the contents of a module with the module name we avoid any nasty naming conflicts there could be a get underscore description function in some other module and we would not call it by mistake. In the second case, we are within a function and know that nothing else name choice is here. So we imported the choice function from the random module directly. We could have written the function like the following synapse. which returns random results like many aspects of programming dot pick the style that seems the most clear to you the module qualified name is safer by requires a little more typing the get underscore description example showed variations of how to import but not where to do importing they all called import from inside the function. We could have imported random from outside the function. You should consider a import from outside the function of the imported code might be used in more than one place and from inside if you know it used will be limited some people prefer to put all their imports at the top of the file just to make all the differences to their code exploit either way works the python standard library one of python prominent claims is that it has batteries included a large standard library of modules 
that performs many useful tasks and are kept separate to avoid bloating the core language. When you are about to write some Python code, it is often worthwhile to first check whether there is a standard module that already does what you want. It is surprising how often you encounter little game in the standard library. Python also provides authoritative documentation for the module along with the tutorial, drug, hell, men's website, Python module of the week, and this book, the Python standard library by example are also very useful guide. Upcoming chap lecture in this course feature many of the standard modules that are specific for the web system database and so on. Handle missing keys with set default and default right. You have seen that trying to access the dictionary with a non-existing key raise and exception using the dictionary get function to reach a default value avoid an exception. The set default function like get dot but also assigned a item to the dictionary if the key is missing. If the key was not already in the dictionary, the new value is used. If we try to assign a difficult default values to an exciting key, the original value is returned and nothing is changed. Default dict is similar but specifies the default values for any new key up from when the dictionary is created. Its argument is a function. In this example, we pass the function int, which will be called as int and return the integer 0. The argument to default dict is a function that returns the value to be assigned to missing key. In the following example, no underscore idea is executed to return a value when needed. You can use the function int list or dig to return default empty value for those types. Int return 0, list return an empty list and dig returns in empty dictionary. If you limit the argument, the initial value of a new key will be set to none. By the way, you can use lambda to define your default making function right inside the call. Using int in more one way to make your own counter. In the preceding example, if food underscore counter had been a normal dictionary instead of a default dict, Python would have raised an exception every line. We tried to increment the dictionary element food underscore counter because it would not have been initialized. We would have needed to do some extra work as Here. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the course. In this lecture, I am telling you about add a method. The child class can also add a method that was not present in its parents class. Going back to class car and yoga, 
we will define the new method need underscore a underscore push for class yogo only next make a car and a yogo a yogo object can react to a need underscore a underscore push method call but a generic car object cannot at this point a yogo can do something that a car cannot and the distinct personality of a yogo can emerge get help from your parent with super we saw how the child class could add or override a method from the parent what if it wanted to call the parent method i am glad you asked say super we will define a new class called email person that represent a person with an email address first our familiar person definition notice that the underscore init underscore call in the following subclass has an additional email parameter when you define an underscore init underscore method for your class you are replacing that underscore init underscore method of its parent class and the letter is not called at automatically anymore as a result we need to call it explicitly here's what happening the super gets the definition of the parent class person the underscore init underscore method calls the person underscore init underscore method it takes care of passing the self argument to the super class so you just need to give it any optional argument in our case the only other argument person except in name the self dot email equal to email line is the new code that makes this email person different from a person moving on let's make one of this creature we should be able to access both the name and email attribute why did not we just define our new class as follow we could have done that but it would have defeat our use of inheritance we use super to make person do its work the same as a plan person object would there's another benefit if the definition of person change in the future using super will ensure that the attributes and methods that email person inherits from person will reflect the change use super when the child is doing something its own way but it still needs something from the parents as in real life in self defense one criticism of python is the need to include self as the first argument to instance method python use the self argument to find the right object attribute and methods for an example i will show how you would call an object method and what python actually does behind the scenes remember class car from earlier example let's call it exclaim method gain here's what python actually does under the hood look up the class for the object car pass the object car to the exclaim method of the car classes the self parameter just for fun you can even run it this way yourself and it will work the same as the normal syntax get and set attribute value with properties some object oriented language support private object attribute that cannot be accessed directly from the outside programs often need to write getter and setter method to read and write the values of such private attributes python does not need getter or setter because all attributes and methods are public and you are expected to behave yourself define a class with class i compare an object to for plastic box a class is like the mode that makes the box for instance a string is the 
built in python class that makes a string object such as cat and dog duck python has many other built in classes to create the other standard data types including list dictionaries and so on to create your own custom object in python you first need to define a class by using the class keyword let's work through a simple example suppose that you want to define object to represent information about people each object will represent one person you will first want to define a class called person as the mode in the example that follow we will try mode that one version of this class as we built up from the simplest class to ones that actually do something useful our first try is the simplest possible class an empty one just as with function we needed to say passes to indicate that this class was empty this definition is the bare minimum to create an object you create an object from a class by calling the class name as though it was a function in this case person create an individual object from the person class and assign it the name someone but our person class was empty so the someone object that we create from it just sits there and cannot do anything else you would never actually define such a class and i am only showing it here to build up to the next example let's try again this time in including the special python object initialization method underscore in it this is what you will see the real python class definition i admit that the underscore in it underscore and self look strange underscore in it underscore is the special python name for a method to initialize an individual object from its class definition the self argument specifies that it refers to the individual object itself when you define underscore in it underscore in a class definition it first parameter should be self although self is not a reserved word in python its common uses no one reading your code later will need to guess what you meant if you use self but even that second person definition did not create an object that really did anything the third try is the charm that really show how to create a simple object in python this time we will add the parameter name to the initialization method now we can create an object from the person class by passing a string for the name parameter here's what the line of code does looks up the definition of the person class instant 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 it and a new object in memory calls an object underscore in it underscore method passing the newly created object as self and the other program as name he stored the value of new in the object returns the new object attach the name hunter to the object this new object is like any other object in python you can use it as an element of a list tuple dictionary or set you can pass it to a function as an argument or return it as a result what about the name value that we passed in it was saved with the object as an attribute you can read and write it directly remember inside the person class definition you access the name attribute as self dot name when you create an actual object such as hunter you refer to it as hunter dot name it is not necessary to have an underscore in it underscore method in every class definition it is used to do anything 
there's the need to distinguish this object from other create from the same class inheritance when you are trying to solve some coding problem often you will find an exciting class that create objects that do almost what you need what can you do you could modify this old class but you will make it more complicated and you might break something that used to work of course you could write a new class cutting and passing from the old one and merging your new code but this time that you have more code to maintain and the parts of the old and new classes that used to work the same might drift apart because they are now in separate place the solution in is in high tens creating a new class for an exciting class but with some addition of changes it's an excellent way to reuse code when you use inheritance the new class can automatically use all the code from the old class but without copying any of it you define only what you need to add or change in the new class and this overs write the behavior of the old class the original class is called a parent super class or base class the new class is called a child sub class or derived class these terms are interchangeable in object oriented program so let's inherit something we will define an empty class called car next define a sub class or class called yogo you define a sub class by using the same class keyword by with the parent class name inside the parameter parenthesis next create an object from each class a child class is a specialization of a parent class in object oriented lingo yogo is a card the object name give underscore me underscore a underscore yogo is an instance class yogo but it also inherit whatever a car can do in this case car and yogo are as useful and deck hand on a submarine so let's try new class definition that actually do something finally make on object from each class and call text exclaim method without doing anything special yogo inherited the exclaim method from car in fact yogo say that it is a car which might lead to an identity request let's see what we can do about that override a method as you just saw a new class initially inherit everything from its parent class moving forward you will see how to replace or override a parent method you go should probably be different from car in some way otherwise what's the point of defining a new class let's change the exclaim method works for a yogo now makes two object from this class what do they say in this example in this example we over wrote the exclaim method we can override my any method include underscore in it underscore here's another example that use our earlier person class let's make sub class that represent doctor and lawyers in this case the initialization method underscore need underscore takes the same argument as the parent person class but store the value of name definitely inside the object instance that's it for the lecture Thank you for watching everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about what are object python hides most of the object machinery by means of a special syntax you can type num equal to 7 to create a object of type integer with the value 7 and assign an object reference to the name num the only time you need to look inside object is when you want to make 
your own or modify the behavior of exciting objects. You will see how to do both in this lecture. An object contains both data called method. It represents a unique instance of some concrete thing. For example, the integer object with the value 7 is an object that facilitates methods such as addition and multiplication as it demonstrated in number. This means there's an integer class in Python to which both 7 and 8 belong. The strings cat and duck are also objects in Python and have a string method that you have seen such as capitalize and replace. When you create new object on has ever created before, you must create a class that indicates what they contain. Think of objects as nouns and their methods are verbs. An object represents an individual things and its method define how it interacts with other things. Unlike module, you can have multiple objects at the same time, each one with different values for its attribute. They are like super data structure with code throw-in. Define a class with class. I compare an object to for plastic box. A class is like the mode that makes the box. For instance, a string is the built-in Python class that makes a string object such as cat and dog, duck. Python has many other built-in classes to create the other standard data types, including list, dictionaries, and so on. To create your own custom object in Python, you first need to define a class by using the class keyword. Let's work through a simple example. Suppose that you want to define object to represent information about people. Each object will represent one person. You will first want to define a class called person as the mode. In the example that follow, we will try mode that one version of this class as we built up from the simplest class to ones that actually do something useful. Our first try is the simplest possible class, an empty one. Just as with function, we needed to say passes to indicate that this class was empty. This definition is the bare minimum to create an object. You create an object from a class by calling the class name as though it was a function. In this case, person create an individual object from the person class and assign it the name someone. But our person class was empty, so the someone object that we create from it just sits there and cannot do anything else. You would never actually define such a class and I am only showing it here to build up to the next example. Let's try again, this time in including the special python object initialization method underscore in it. This is what you will see the real python class definition. I admit that the underscore init underscore and self look strange. Underscore init underscore is the special python name for a method to initialize an individual object from its class definition. The self argument specifies that it refers to the individual object itself. When you define underscore init underscore in a class definition, it first parameter should be self, although self is not a reserved word in python, its common uses. No one reading your code letter will need to guess what you meant if you use self. But even that second person definition did not create an object that really did anything. The third try is the charm that really shows how to create a simple object in python. This time we will add the parameter name to the 
initialization method now we can create an object from the person class by passing a string for the name parameter here's what the line of code does looks up the definition of the person class instant Insta, instant it int a new object in memory calls an object underscore init underscore method passing the newly created object as self and the other program as name. Restore the value of new in the object. Returns the new object. Attach the name hunter to the object. This new object is like any other object in Python. You can use it as an element of a list, tuple, dictionary, or set. You can pass it to a function as an argument or return it as a result. What about the name value that we passed in? It was saved with the object as an attribute. You can read and write it directly. Remember inside the person class definition, you access the name attribute as self.name. When you create an actual object such as hunter, you refer to it as hunter.name. It is not necessary to have an underscore init underscore method in every class definition. It is used to do anything that need to distinguish this object from other create from the same class. There's another benefit. If the definition of person change in the future, using super will ensure that the attributes and methods that email person inherits from person will reflect the change. Use super when the child is doing something its own way, but it still needs something from the parents as in real life. In self-defense, one criticism of Python is the need to include save as the first argument to instance method. Python used the self argument to find the right object attribute and methods. For an example, I will show how you would call an object method and what Python actually does behind the scenes. Remember class car from earlier example let's call it exclaim method gain here's what python actually does under the hood look up the class for the object card pass the object card to the exclaim method of the car classes the self parameter just for fun you can even run it this way yourself and it will work the same as the normal syntax get and set attribute value with properties some object oriented language support private object attribute that cannot be accessed directly from the outside programs often need to write getter and setter method to read and write the values of such private attributes python does not need getter or setter because all attributes and methods are public and you are expected to behave yourself. If direct accesses to attribute makes you nervous, you can certainly write getter and setter, but be Pythonic used properties. In this example, we will define a dark class with a single attribute called hidden underscore name. I will show you a better way to name attribute that you want to keep we do not want people to access this directly, so we will define two methods, a getter and a setter. I have added a print statement to each method to show when it is being called. Finally, we define method as properties of the name attribute. The new method acts as normal getter and setter until that last line it defined the two method as properties of the attribute call name the first argument to property is the getter method and the second is the setter 
Now when you refer to the name of any dark object, it actually called the get underscore name method to return it. You can call get underscore name directly to like a normal getter method. When you assign a value to the name attribute, the set underscore name method will be called. You can call the set underscore name method directly. Another way to define properties with decorator in this next example, we will define two different methods, each called name but preceded by defined directories. Here's how they actually look in this code. You can still access name as though it was an attribute, but there are no visible get underscore name or set underscore name methods. In both of the previous example, we use the name property to refer to a single attribute. A property can refer to a polluted valued as well. We can refer the delimiter as if we can attribute such as read. Here the fun part, we can change the radius attribute at any time and the diameter property will be computed for the current value of radius. If you do not specify a setter properly for attribute, you cannot set it from the outside. This is handy for read-only attribute. There's one more big advantage of using a property over direct attribute access. If you ever changes the definition of the attribute, you only need to fix the code within the class definition, not in all the colors. That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about convert to a string with join. Combine with join, discuss join function in get the details, but here is another example of what you can do with it. But wait, you might be thinking that the seems a little backward. Join is a string method, not a list method. You can say max dot join even though seems more intuitive the arrangement to join function is a string or any iterable square of a string and its output is a string of join function when just a list method you could not use it with other iterable object such as tuple or string. If you did want to work with any iterable type, you had need a special code for each type of handle the actual joining. It might help to remember join function is the opposite of split function as demonstrated here. Now, record an item with short. You will often need to short the item in a list by their value rather than their offset. Python provides two functions. Number one, the list function short shorts at least itself in place. In general, function a stored function return a stored, a stored copy of the list. If the item in the list are numerical, they are sorted by default in ascending number order. If they are string, they are sorted in alphabetic order. Sorted underscore marks as in the copy and creating it did not change the original list. But calling the list function short function on the marks list does change Mark says, if the element of your list are all of the same type would work correctly, you can sometimes even mix types. For example, integer and floats because they are automatically covered to one another by Python in expression. 
the default short order is extending but you can edit the argument reserve equal to true to set it to descending get len by using len len function returns the number of item in a list assign equal to comma copy with copy function when you assign one list to more than one variable changing the list in one place also change it in the order as illustrated here so what is in v now is still square bracket 1 to 3 or square bracket surprise 2 3 let's see remember the sticky note analogy in previous chapter but reduce to the same list object as a therefore whether we change the list content by using the name a or b it is reflected in both you can copy the values of a list to an independent fresh list by using any of these method number one this list copy function the list conversion function this list lies our original list will be again we will make v with list copy function c with the list function conversion function and d with a list lies again v and c and d are copies of a slice they are new object with their own values and no connection to a original list object square bracket 1 to 3 to which a refers changing it does not affect the copies c b and d that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about get a slice to exert item by offset range you can exert a subsequence of a list by using a slice a slice of a list is also a list as with string slice can step by values other than one the next example start at the beginning and goes right by two here we start at the end and go left by two and finally the tricks to reserve a list add an item to the end with append the traditional way of adding item to a list is to append them one by one to the end in the previous example we forgot zippo but that's all right because the list is immutable so we can add him over Combine list by using extend or plus equal. You can merge one list into another by using extend. Suppose that a well-meaning person gave us a new list of marks called others, and we had like to merge them into the main marks list. Alternatively, you can use plus equal. If we had used append, others would have been added as a single list item rather than merging its item. This again demonstrates that a list can contain elements of different types. In this case, for a string and a list of two string. Add an item by offset with insert. The append function adds item only to the end of the list. When you want to add an item before any, any offset in the list, use insert. Offset 0 insert at the beginning and offset beyond the end of the list insert at the end. Like append so you do not need to worry about python throwing an exception. Delete an item by offset with del. Our fact chicken checkers have just informed us that Gummo was indeed one of the Marx brothers. But Carl was not. 
let's undo the last insertion when you delete an item by its position in the list the item that follows it move back to take the deleted items space and the list length decrease by one if we harp from the last version of the marxist list we get the this as a result delete an item by value with remove if you are not sure or do not care where where the item is in the list use remove delete by value goodbye gamma get an item by offset and delete it by using pop you can get an item from a list and delete it from the list in the same times by using pop if you call pop with an offset it will return the item and the offset with no argument it used one so pop 0 return the head of the list and pop or pop minus 1 return the tail as shown here find an items offset by value with index if you want to know the offset of an item in a list by its value use index get an item by using offset as with string you can extract a single value from a list by specifying its offset again as with string negative index count backward from the end the offset has be valid one for list a position you have assigned a value previously if you specify an offset before the beginning or after the end you will get an exception here sort of an if we try to get the sixth max brother or the fifth brother in the end list of lists lists can contain element of different types including other list as illustrated here So what does all underscore but a list of list look like Let's look at the first item in it The first item is a list in fact it's a small underscore but the first item we specified when creating underscore but you should be able to guess what second item is It is the second item we specified extinct underscore bars If we want the first item of extinct underscore but we can extract it from all underscore but by specifying two index the reference to the list there's the second item in all underscore but where's the refers to the first item in that inner list change an item by offset just as you can get the value of a list item by its offset you can change it again the list offset need to be a valid one for this list you cannot change a character in a string in this way because strings are immutable lists are mutable you can change how many item a list contain and the item themselves That's it for the lecture. Thank you for watching. Everyone, welcome to the Python course. In this lecture, I am telling you about repeat with while. Test with if, else, and else runs from top to bottom. Sometimes we need to do something more than once. We need a loop, and the simplest looping mechanism in Python is while. Using the interactive interpreter, try this next example. which is a simple loop that prints the number from 2 1 to 5 we first assign the value 1 to count the while loop compare the value of count to 5 and 
continued if count was less than or equal to 5. Inside the loop, we printed the value of count and then incremented its value by 1 with the statement count plus equal to 1. Python goes back to the top of the loop and again compared count with 5. The value of count is now 2. So the content of the while loop are again executed and count is incremented to 3. This continue until count is incremented from 5 to 6 at the bottom of the loop on the next trip to the top count less than equal 5 is now false and the while loop ends python moves on to the next 9 cancel with break if you want to loop until something occurs but you are not sure about the might happen you can use the infinite loop with a break statement this time we will read a line of input from the keyboard via python's input function and then print it with the first letter capitalized we break out of the loop when a line containing only the letter q is typed skip ahead with continue sometimes you do not want to break out of a loop but just want to skip ahead to the next literation for some reason here is a contrived example let's read an integer print its square of its word and skip it if it is even we even add a few comments again we will use q to stop the loop check break use with else if the while loop in normally control passes to an optional else you use this when you have coded a while loop to check for something and breaking as soon as it's found the else would be run if the while loop completed but the project was not found iterate with for python makes frequent use of iterators for good reason they make it possible for you to traverse data structure without knowing how large they are or how they are implemented you can even iterate over data that is created on the fly allowing processing of data streams that would otherwise not fit in the computer's memory all at once let's legal python to step through a sequence like this but there's a better more python way lists such as rabbits are one of python's iterable object along with string tuples dictionaries sets and some other elements tuple or list iteration produce as item at a time String iteration produce a character at a time as shown there. Iterating over a dictionary returns the key. In this example, the key are the types of cards. In the board game clue. To iterate over the value Rather than the key, you use the dictionary value function. To return both the key and value in a tuple, you can use the item function. Remember that you can assign to a tuple in on a step. For each tuple return by items, assign the first value to cut the second to content. Compare with if, elif, and else. So far in the lecture, we have talked almost entirely about data structure. Now we finally talk our first step into the code structure that web data into program. Our first example is this teeny Python program that checks the value 
of the boolean variable register and fits an appropriate comment the if and else lines are python statement that check whether a condition is true remember print is python built in function to print things normally to your screen each print lines is indented under it test i used for space to indent is substron although you can use any indentation you like python expects you to be consistent with code with a section the line need to be indented the same amount line up of the left don't use tab or mix tabs the and space it misses of the intended count we did a number of things here which i will explain more fully as the lecture progresses assign the boolean value true to the variable name register performed a condition comparison by using if and else executing different codes depending on the values of register called the print function to print some text you can have test within test as many levels deep as needed in python indentation determines how the if and else section are paired our first test was to check fully because fully is true python goes to the indented if a small test because we had set a small to true if a small is evaluated as true this make python run the text line and print it as a cat if there are more than two possibilities to test use if elif and else in the preceding example we tested for equality with the double equal operator python.com prison operator r equality double equality inequality less than this return the boolean values true or false let's see how this all work but first again a variable to x now let's try some test note that two equation sign are used to test equality remember a single equal sign is what you use to assign a value to a variable if you need to make multiple comparison at the same time you see the boolean operator and or and not to determine the final boolean result boolean operators have lower precedence than the chunk of code that they are comparing this means that the chunk are calculated first then compared in the example because we set x to 7 5 less than x is calculated to be true and x less than 10 also true so we finally end with true and true the easiest way to avoid confusion about precedence is to add parenthesis here the some other test if you are and in multiple comparison with one variable python lets you do this it is the same as 5 less than x and x less than 10 you can also write long comparison now what is true what if the else meant where checking is not a boolean what does python consider true and false a false value does not necessarily need to explicitly by false for example these are all considered false boolean false null none zero integer zero zero float zero dot zero empty string empty set anything else is considered true python program use the definition of truth thinness to check for empty data structure as well as false conditions if what you are testing is an expression rather than a simple variable python values the expression and returns a boolean result so if type the 
this python evaluated color double equal red in our example we assign the string puke to color earlier so color double equal red is false and python moves on to the next test that's it for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about comment with hash a comment is a piece of text in your program that is ignored by the python interpreter you might use comment to clarify nearby python code make note to yourself to fix something someday or for whatever purpose you like you mark a comment by using the hash character everything from that point on to the end of the current line is part of the comment you will usually see a comment on a line by itself as shown here the hash character has many names hash sharp pound or the sinister sounding octothorpe whatever you call it it effects last only to the end of the line on which it appears python does not have a multi line comment you need to explicitly begin each comment line or section with a hash however if it is not in a text string the all powerful octopore revert back to its role as a plain old hash character continue with continue lines with backslash program are more readable when lines are reasonably short the recommended maximum line length is 80 character if you cannot say everything you want to say in that length you can use the continuation character backslash just put backslash at the end of a line and python will suddenly acts as though you are still on the same line for example if i wanted to build a long string from a smaller one i could do it in a step or i could do in it on a step using the continuation character line continuation is also needed if a python express expands multiple lines compare with if elif and else so far in the lecture we have talked almost entirely about data structure now we finally talk our first step into the code structure that web data into program our first example is this tiny python program that checks the value of the boolean variable register and prints an appropriate comment the if and else lines are python statement that check whether a condition is true remember print is python built in function to print things normally to your screen each print lines is indented under it test i used for space to indent is subtraction although you can use any indentation you like python expects you to be consistent with code with a section the line need to be indented the same amount line up of the left don't use tab or mix tabs the and space it misses of the intended count we did a number of things so here which i will explain more fully as the lecture progresses assign the boolean value true to the variable name register performed a condition comparison by using if and else executing different codes depending on the values of register called the print function to print some text you can have test 
with in test as many levels deep as needed in python indention determines how the if and else section are paired our first test was to check fury because fury is true python goes to the indented if a small test because we had set a small to true if a small is evaluated as true this make python run the text line and print it as a cat if there are more than two possibilities to test use if elif and else in the preceding example we tested for equality with the double equal operator python dot com prison operator r equality double equality inequality less than this it and the boolean values true or false let's see how this all work but first again a variable to x now let's try some test note that two equation sign are used to test equality remember a single equal sign is what you use to assign a value to a variable if you need to make multiple comparison at the same time you see the boolean operator and or and not to determine the final boolean result boolean operators have lower precedence than the chunk of code that they are comparing this means that the chunk are calculated first then compared in the example because we set x to 7 5 less than x is calculated to be true and x less than 10 also true so we finally end with true and true the easiest way to avoid confusion about precedence is to add parenthesis here the some other test if you are and in multiple comparison with one variable python lets you do this it is the same as 5 less than x and x less than 10 you can also write long comparison iterate with for python makes frequent use of iterators for good reason they make it possible for you to traverse data structure without knowing how large they are or how they are implemented you can even iterate over data that is created on the fly allowing processing of data streams that would otherwise not fit in the computer's memory all at once let's legal python to step through a sequence like this but there's a better more python way list such as rabbits are one of python's iterable object along with string tuples dictionaries sets and some other elements tuple or list iteration produce as item at a time string iteration produce a character at a time as shown there iterating over a dictionary returns the key in this example the key are the types of cards in the board game clue to iterate over the value rather than the key you use the dictionary value function to return both the key and value in a tuple you can use the item function remember that you can assign to a tuple in on a step for each tuple return by items assign the first value to card the second to content check break use with else similar to while for has an optional else that checks if the for completed normally if breaks was not called the else statement is run this is useful when you want to verify that the previous for loop ran to completion instead of being stopped only with a break 
the for loop in the following example points the name of the character of the cheese and breaks if any cheese is found in the chip shop as with while the use of else with for might seems non intuitive it makes more sense if you think of the more as looking for something and else being called if you did not find it to get the sum effect without else use sum variable to indicate whether you found what you wanted in the for loop as demonstrated here that's for the lecture thank you for watching hello everyone welcome to the python course in this lecture i am telling you about new style formatting with curl bracket and format Old style is formatting is still supported in Python 2, which will freeze at version 2.7. It will be supported forever. However, new style formatting is recommended if you are using Python 3. The simplest uses in this picture. Old style argument needed to be provided in the order in which their percentage placeholders appeared in the string. With new style, you can specify the order. The value 0 refers to the first argument, f where 1 refers to the string s, and 2 refers to the last argument, the integer n. The arguments can be a dictionary or named argument, and the specifiers can include their names. In the next example, let's try combining our three values into a dictionary, which looks like this. In the following example, zero curl bracket is the entire dictionary, where curl bracket one is the string other the following the dictionary. This example all printed their arguments with default format. All style allows type specifier after the percentage in the string, but new style puts it after a first with positional arguments. In this example, we use the same value but as named arguments. The other options are also. supported same as preceding example but the greater than character make the right element more explicit minimum field white 10 left aligned minimum field white 10 centered there is on change from old style the precision value still means the number of digit after the decimal for floats and the maximum number of character of string but you cannot use it for integers. The final option is the field character. If you want something other than a space to pad your output field, put it right after the before any element greater than less than or wide special fields. Match with regardless expression. Armed with the introductory information, you have probably used simple wildcard pattern on the common line such as is integer.py which means list all file names ending in .py. It's time to explore more complex pattern matching by using regular expression. These are provided in the standard module re which will import. You define a string pattern that you want to match and the source string to match against 
for simple match uses look like this here u is the pattern and young frankenstein is the source the string you want to check match checks whether the source begins with the pattern for more complex matches you can comply your pattern first to speed up the match later then you can perform your match against the compiled pattern match is not the only way to compare the pattern and source here are several other methods you can use search returns the first match if any findal return a list of all known overlapping matches if any split source at match with pattern and returns a list of the string species subtract another replacement argument and change all parts of source that are matches by pattern to replacement exact match with match does the string young funk stand being with the word you here some code with comments how about prank this time match returns nothing and the if did not run the print statement as i said earlier match works only if the pattern is at the beginning of the source but search work if the pattern is anywhere let's change the pattern following is a brief explanation of how our new pattern work dot means any single character integer mean any number of the preceding things together dot and integer means any number of character frank is the phrase that we wanted to match somewhere match it on the string that match dot integer frank young frank first name match with search you can use search to find pattern frank anywhere in the source string young frank is 10 without the need for the dot integer wild card now all matches with final all the preceding example look for on match only but what if you want to know how many instances of the single letter string n are in the string how about n followed by an character notice that it did not match the final n we did need to say that the character after n is optional n is split at matches with split the example that follows show how you to split a string into a list by a pattern rather than a simple string replace at matches with sub this is like the string replace method but your pattern rather than literal string that is for the example and this is for the lecture thank you for watching